Hi, and welcome back. Let's resume our discussion of window functions in SQL. I'll promise that this will be a shorter video than the last uh, 50 plus minute video. But, uh, well, window functions uh, bring some cool details with them. And uh, the last video invested some time in explaining them. So um, this video will be different. We will look at uh, one particular example already because uh, we are at the beginning of our discussion of window functions, but we I think we have collected enough stuff already to start um, talking about some brief and but still interesting and nice examples. And those examples get much more interesting and much more uh, in depth once we collected more stuff and, and more uh, features and constructs that relate to window functions. But uh, let's first look at this example. It's uh, about something that uh, bugs me a lot because people always uh, say that uh, there is a high chance on weekends that the weather will turn out bad, which is of course nonsense, all right? So there is a myth that people say, hey, there is a higher chance on the weekend that it will be rainy than during the weekdays and uh, me, 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 me. Okay, so let's uh, put some uh, facts here and analyze data. Let's analyze temperature sensor data, like, uh, for example, collected in a table like this. Uh, all right, so that would be my temperature sensors data. And you can see that I've ordered the days here. I just numbered them the first, second, third day in the range of days that I have recorded weather data for. I've also included the weekday, whether it's a Friday, a Sunday or a Wednesday, because that will be interesting in identifying whether we are talking about weekend weather or weekday weather. And then there are the sensor readings, for example, the temperature, the average temperature on that particular day, and the amount of rainfall that we have observed in this particular day. It's the milliliters of rain per square meters. So based on this sensor data, let's see whether the weather on a particular day is gloomy or sunny or fine or rainy. Okay, let's define that the weather on a particular day D is fine. Okay, if on D and the two days prior, all right, ah, this sounds like frames. Okay, if on D and the two days prior, the minimum temperature is about 15 degrees and the rainfall is less than 600 milliliters per square meters. All right, so we are not looking only at the day D and whether it's sunny or rainy on that particular day, but we are also interested in the recent history because, uh, well, the weather is really only fine considered in this example uh, anyway. If the two days prior have been okay, not too cold and not too chilly, when there has lots of has been lots of rainfall in the two days before, then all the grass is wet. We cannot go out in the park, have a picnic, or the biking and hiking path would be would be muddy and so on. So that's of no good use for us. We are looking at day D and also the two days prior, and we have they these days have to fulfill these criteria to be considered as fine weather on day D, all right. And then once our computation is done, once our query is done, we want to have output like this. We want to discern, we want to separate the weekend from the weekdays, okay? Uh, so the true value here would indicate the weekends. This would be the data for the weekdays. And then the percent of chance, how likely is it that the weather will be fine on the weekends or the weekdays? All right, and then once we have done this and all of this, uh, we are putting an end to that particular myth of bad weather weekends. All right, so let's switch over to SQL and see whether we can achieve that analysis. Here we go. So let's first create the sensors table with all the, the day and weekday data and also the sensor readings. So let's create that table. All right, there we go. And these are the completely made up sensor readings I'm putting in here. You see it's uh, it's about a range of 24 days. Got that. All right, so now let's see how such a query could look like. Okay, the first task probably is to define this three day view of the day D and the 
two days prior. We need that three day view, uh, for example, regarding Monday, the fifth day in our recordings, that three day view would incorporate these rows. All right. And our criteria for good weather would look at the minimum temperature, the minimum temperature within this frame. Okay, uh, this would be 12 degrees and the accumulated rainfall within this uh, particular range of days that would be three well, that would be 800 milliliters per square meter all right this is the criteria the data that we need to collect to decide whether weather would be fine on this fifth day on this monday yes or no so let's first have this frame based view of the data and of course we will use window functions for that and that's why the query I'm specifying here is proceeding in three phases. And the first phase, indeed, would be concerned with the uh, computation of the weather sensor data within three-day windows. All right, so we would iterate over all the days, or the sensor readings per day, and call them S. All right. We would, of course, order this data, order the entire table by the day specifier, one, two, three, four, five. So we would consider the days in order, all right? And then we would define the frame. The frame would uh, start two rows before the current row and extend and include the current row, okay? You see that we are in rows mode. It really makes sense to count the number of rows here to determine the size of the frames. So. The current day D and the two days prior, they are defined by this particular frame specification. Okay, we call that window the three days window for good reasons. And we will indeed use it two times, you see here and here in this query. And it already makes sense to introduce this three days abbreviation using the window clause in this tiny example. Okay, so what's left to do? We will, of course, uh, build a table that still reports the original day or date data. All right, so day and weekday are just passed through unchanged. And then over that three day window, we will compute the minimum temperature. Okay, we can just use aggregate functions here to aggregate over the data inside the frame and the accumulated amount of rainfall. We will just sum up the rainfall in the milliliters in the three day window. And that would be the first step. Actually, it's already the crucial step in the computation of this particular example. Everything else is just regular SQL business. So let's see what three-day sensors, after we've done the window-based computation, uh, how, they, how does three days windows look like? So uh, here's phase three. Let's disable that and just look at the three days sensors data here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the output has 24 rows. Not surprising because the input data, the census table had 24 rows. We computed the three days windows for each of the individual measurements. Each day has been considered the current row at one particular point, and uh, each row has been uh, con has been considered within its three day frame. Okay. So we were looking, for example, at this particular, the fifth day in our measurement, the Monday. Let's see and recall the data in this, in the vicinity. All right. Okay. So in the three day window, in this window, the minimum temperature indeed is 12 degrees and the accumulated rainfall is indeed 800 milliliters. You see that for days at the fringe of the table, for example, this Friday, this Friday, doesn't have any two day preceding. We have uh, a one one day is preceding. And within this tiny frame that we can make up for this Friday, uh, the minimum temperature is 10 and the accumulated rainfall is 800. Yes, that's what we find here. All right, and we find these uh, readings and the specifications for all of the uh, 24 rows here. Okay, so that would be the first step. And now, well, we would now just apply our criteria that uh, define whether a particular day is considered to be a fine day. We could now look at these days individually because, uh, well, we have already aggregated the data around their current vicinity, their current frame, and deciding whether a particular day has nice weather is just now a business of looking at the minimum temperature and the accumulated rainfall in 
the frame around that day. Fr the, the framing has already been done, the window computation. It's, uh, it's very simple computation. We would iterate over all these th three day sensors entries that we've just seen here below. We would uh, pass through the day and weekday information so that we don't lose it. And then we would just look at the temperature and the rainfall measurements. If the current temperature or the minimum temperature in the frame is at least 15 degrees and the rain does not exceed 600 milliliters, then that would be considered fine weather. Otherwise, it's gloomy. And that would be the condition around this day. Okay, very simple. No window functions uh, involved at all. Just simple case distinction. Let's see at the weather. Okay. All right, so for each of the 24 days, we now have identified the condition, which depended on that day, but also the two days prior. And we see that there is some gloomy stuff in there, but also some sun, I hope. Yeah, there are some sunny periods in here. All right, all that's left to do now is to aggregate. Aggregate for the weekends and the weekdays separately, so that we can analyze where the chance of uh, sunny and fine weather separately for the weekdays and for the weekends. And that's what phase three is doing. Okay, so let's reactivate it. Phase three is looking simply at the weather table. This is just this weather condition table that we have uh, built. All right. Uh, we will group this table into the weekend and the week weekdays. And how we do that is just by grouping by this Boolean flag. You see how this Boolean flag is introduced here in the select clause. In the group by clause, we can refer to columns that have been computed in the select clause. And that's what we do here. You see that this would be true for the Saturday and Sundays. And, and for any other day, we would have the weekend uh, considered false. All right. So weekends and weekdays are considered separately. And for these uh, weekends and weekdays, we would just count. We would just count the number of overall weekdays or weekends that we have found in our sensor data and would put that into relation with the nice weather days on the weekends and the weekdays. All right, so you see this is just a simple percent com uh, computation that's being performed here. Uh, this is all the days. This would be all the fine days inside the group. Uh, you see this filter condition here. This is the filtered aggregate that we have seen before. And that's about it. No window functions involved at all. The window functions did the hard work in the very beginning in phase one of the sample query. So and if you evaluate this, then you can see the myth is uh, put to rest. Uh, if it's a weekend, there's 43% of fine weather, and that's even better than on the weekend days when there was only 29% chance. So much for this myth based on completely random fake weather data. Hmm. All right. So there, this would be one first application. It's very simple, very simplistic. Just to see, just to, to show you the typical steps and the typical role that window functions would play in such data analysis tasks. We will find uh, way more interesting examples in the very near future. All right, before we do that, let's use this video uh, to introduce one more feature into the, uh, into the uh, family of features that we can use with uh, window functions and frame specifications. And that's the order, the partition by, I'm sorry, the partition by. Uh, so you see, this extends the syntax for window functions that we have seen earlier. If you have considered the syntax before, there was only the ordering criteria, very relevant in window function computation, and of course, the frame specification, between and unbounding and so on. All right, so these have been the two components that have been there before. The partition is new, the partition is new. Okay, looking at this now. Uh, the semantics of this is uh, the input table that we iterate over, first partition it, first group it into disjoint partition, disjoint groups of rows based on these criteria. All rows that agree on all of these M criteria are considered to be in one partition, in one group say okay 
And then the computation of all the frame specification, uh, the meaning of uh, unbounded preceding or unbounded following and so on, all of this is captured or is restricted to the current partition of the current row. All right. So each row will, of course, be member of one of these partitions. And when I compute frames with vicinity around such a row, it will never exit, will never cross partitions. So stuff like unbounded preceding, unbounded following, but also two preceding order, seven or seven following, are really considered inside the partition, inside the partition. Frames can never look across partition borders. Okay, so first partitioning, then within each, within each partition, we will order the rows according to the ordering criteria. And then inside the ordered partition, we will compute the frames and the vicinity of the rows. So we will never see across partition boundaries. This will be very useful to, uh, to organize the input data into uh, rows that uh, belong together regarding criteria PI here, these criteria, and only then order them and uh, analyze the vicinity, the frames around uh, particular rows. So partition by is much more useful and will come up much more often than you might expect by now. So it's, it's really uh, intricate and a uh, 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 feature of these window functions and it will be super crucial. Okay. If you need to remember the order in which uh, these partition by, order by and frame specifications are really applied to the input table, then that would be just the order in which you write them down here in the over specification. So maybe this is something that you can uh, use to remember the semantics of the entire thing here. Okay. Um, if you recall, when we were talking about the semantics of the frame specifications, we were using SQL itself to explain the frame contents regarding different frame and now also different partition by specifications. And uh, let's go over to the editor and do the same here, just to see the effect of the partitioning and the effect of frame specification that never may leave, that never may cross partition borders. All right, so for this, we will look at this W table again. And if you recall the W table, let's see. It has been this table where we could see the identity of each row explicitly. We had some ordering criteria on A, and we now also will make use of the column B here. And you see that uh, the rows in table W, they fall into two different, two different partitions regarding column B, in the black and in the white circle partition. So we will now in, this, in the following few examples, we will use the column B as the partitioning criterion so that the white and the black colored rows or circled rows will be considered separately. They will be members of different partitions. Okay, so let's see whether we find that in the window specification. Yes, indeed. So we will partition by the B column, all right? And that will lead to two partitions. If we look at this table W, there are only white and black colored uh, 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 rows here. Okay, so we will have two partitions that are being built. Inside the partition, we will order the rows according to their A values, all right? And then let's see the frame specification well, we will look at all rows before the current row and uh, the current row itself, of course. Okay. So let's see what we uh, find when we evaluate this query. All right. Okay. Indeed, two partitions have been built. You see the black partition and the white partition here. All right. Uh, inside the partition, inside the partition, rows have been ordered according to their A values. So inside the black partition, A values ascend from 2 to 7. And then inside the white partition, they ascend from 1 to 6 here. All right. Okay. Uh, and then we've built frames, frames that look from the current row towards the beginning of the partition. Okay. 
So uh, if we look at the last row in the black partition here, it would be the row nine. Then everything else, everything else, these four rows are be considered before row nine in its black partition. You see that the last partition in the white partition here, row eight, has three preceding rows. These three preceding rows, row one, row four, and row seven, that are inside this white partition. No other row is considered to be preceding row eight. Inside the partition, there's only four rows in in uh, in all in all. Okay, all right. So one more example where we are using different frame specification here. So the partitioning and ordering has not been changed, but uh, we are looking at the row, one row preceding and two rows following. So we are again looking at frames of potential size four, unless we are at partition boundaries, which we will never cross. The rows at partition boundaries will probably have frames of smaller size. And let's see whether we can observe that. Okay, again, black and white partition, again, the ordering. All right, so rows in the middle, rows in the middle of the black partition here, they indeed have frame sizes of size four, but um, uh, row two here, for example, has no preceding row inside its partition. Only two following rows have been included in the frame. Okay, it's the same for the white partition. This row one here, has no preceding rows inside its partition, only two following rows. Okay, the middle, one of the middle rows here has indeed four uh, rows inside its vicinity, inside its frame. Okay, so again, we never cross partition boundaries when we compute window functions. And we could use that, for example, to compute uh, running sums. So sums that start at the beginning of the partition and uh, reach up to the current, currently, currently uh, considered row, the current row. But of course, will never uh, exceed, uh, ex uh, will never cross partition boundaries. Okay, so that would be running sums inside each partition individually computed. So let's see. So we would have two running sums, one for the black and one for the white partition. And as you can see, uh, indeed, we add up the A values inside the black partition to end up with a maximum value of 19 here. All right. And we restart the computation of the running sum in a sense in the white partition again and end up with uh, overall uh, summed up running sum of 16 in the white partition. Okay. So that's partition by in the... Uh, in the syntax of window functions. And uh, I think already starting with the next lecture, with the next video, we will find very good use for partition by, but also for the scan functionality inside uh, that we can express using window functions. So you can look forward to one video that is entirely devoted to one really nice use case of window functions. And I'm looking forward to discuss this with you. Until then, take care.